am at the Gopher State Railway Museum in New Prague. Can I see what I can find here? So this is not a depot. This was actually a grain warehouse that they they moved over here and they did build some walls, they added some windows, they put the bay on it and, uh, and uh, the door to give it that look of a depot. And eventually this will become their, um, oh, what would you want to say, a waiting room where you can buy tickets and, and uh, maybe a little gift shop and, and their office. <laughs> So this is, this is their work board right out in front of me. You can see all the projects that they have going here to keep this museum running. And they're always looking for new members and volunteers. So don't be afraid that there's nothing for you to do if you wanted to volunteer. And uh, they've got information on their um, website and their Facebook page of how you can become a member, volunteer, or even help them with funding. So what are these levers that you're using here? These are the brakes, this is the train brakes, we're not using that, we're just, this is locomotive brake, we're just using that. The brakes, you can't see it. We're running back here. There you go. Here we go. The reverser and the throttle and the shuts the diesel. <laughs> So if you remember a couple weeks back, I was over at the Hill House mm -hmm. in um, St. Paul and we went through uh, the Hill House. And this is actually one of uh, James D. Hill's rail cars. And what goes back to 1880? Correct. It's 1880 and said to be his first office car. So I'm gonna, I, I just, I gotta walk through this. I really do. And before I walk through, I'll show you a little sign here. And like I say, you can always stop the video and read these. This is really cool. This was his private car. See that between 1880 and 1900. How, how great is that, huh? You can't, you can't get history better than this. Look at that. Oh yeah, you can see the paneling and everything here. Check this out. Will you look at that? 1880, folks. And this is Sue. She's going to tell us a little bit about this car. Hello. 
Welcome to Car Manitoba. It was built in 1880 by the Pullman Company for use by James J. Hill as his business car and also his family travels. This area that we're standing in right now is the porter's room. His bed is right there. This also is the dining room where the guests would eat their, their meals. All of the cupboards and couches would hold the, the dishes and the linens. So dining room, I wonder how many people would eat in here? Um, I'm not Good sure. question, huh? Pictures that I've seen, there was a table over here. Okay. And so, it, depending on however many people traveled, it could be six or eight. Actually, I didn't think it'd be even in this good a shape looking at the outside. Yes. There you go. Here's some. All of the woodwork is original. Okay. It's either cherry or mahogany, I've been told, and they just put a veneer over the top. So there's no stain, and it's all crackled because it's been sitting out in the elements for a lot of years. Yeah. So how did you acquire the car, the museum? There was a gentleman up in Howard Lake that approached the volunteers at a train event, had some Polaroid pictures, and needed to get rid of the car. It was going to be demolished by the, um, the road was going to go through their farm. And so the, um, they were going to come and demolish this car, but the guy wanted to sell it just for the scrap wood. And the volunteers looked at it and said, hey, this is a railroad car. So they ended up purchasing it from the gentleman up in Howard Lake, and it was transported by truck down to its current site in New Prague. And the family before that, the car was sold in 1935 by the railroad. It was bought by a private family, the Walter James family of the Nankin restaurant um, history in Minneapolis. They turned it into their family summer home, and Eventually, they sold some of the property that they had and they built a house on the end of this car. So it became part of their house and then eventually um, the kids' playroom. It had been sold to a couple different families. There are some modifications to the interior of the home, but for the most part, they kept everything the way that it was in 1880. Wow, that's a cool story. Thanks. So there's windows on the side. This is. Coming down to the next room here. Oh, this is cool. This is the kitchen. This is the kitchen. This is where modifications were made. Obviously, they did not have a gas stove back in 1880. Yeah. Or a fan in the wall. There probably was a coal-fired or wood-burning stove that would have been in the corner to cook on. Okay. The cupboards are original to the car. Okay. Some things still open. They would have put the silverware in here. There probably would have been dishes and food stock in these two cupboards. Okay. Additionally, the ice box is original to the car, and there's three different sections to it. Oh, wow. I'm not sure about the cupboards or the sink. Yeah. I'm guessing they maybe were added when the family decided to, to buy the car. Yeah. Obviously, this the tile or whatever this is, is not original. This is the electrical panel. Oh, electrical so panel. So at some time they did um, yeah. transfer to electric instead of the gas. Yep. Okay. This is the bedroom. This is cool. And he, obviously they, the family painted in this room. We are trying to scrape off the paint and bring it back to the original wood. Yeah. And then, so you can also see that this is the original wood with just the lacquer. There was, or the veneer, there was nothing else yeah. put on that. This is kind of a decent size, huh? Yes. 
I like the woodwork. See the designs on that? This is so cool. And the metal rails that are behind you mm -hmm. came off of the back of the car. That would have been for okay. the platform. So luckily the family was kind enough to keep that when they took it off. Yeah. So eventually we might be able to make the platform again and put the railings back up there. So that's original. That's 1880, man. That's cool. Look at that thing. So that's awesome. Okay, so I'm coming from that way in this thing. Okay. So what's this? This is a closet. This is probably where they would have kept the linens okay. and everything for the guests and um, for the sleeping in the, the guest. All right. Yes, we have the lavatory. Oh, yeah. And that's a little different than it probably would have looked in 1880, but still awesome. Here you go, there's some electric stuff here. Mm -hmm. Check that out. Okay, now we have seats. As we head to the other end. And this must be a couple more beds, huh? That would yes. come down from this both sides. Back here sleeps eight. Okay. So there's four upper bunks that come pull down. Unfortunately, because of the car is sitting on the trailer, it's shifted, so the, the bunks don't come down. Yeah, nothing's level. And then the seats would have folded to, or kind of slid together to make a bed. Oh, so yeah. And these two couches would also pull out futon style. But there's an interesting story about these two couches. What is that? We found out recently that through a news article that there was a train wreck back, I don't know the date, um, the, a freight train, the crew fell asleep and ended up not knowing that this car and the special train that happened, was holding passengers from the railroad had pulled back onto the main line. They had fallen, apparently they fell asleep and they ended up running into the back of this car. Oh boy. The the manager was sleeping in this car. He was actually, this would have been probably the same as the seats there. So when the steam engine stopped, it came to about right here. The manager was sleeping in that bed. Okay. So they had no, no choice. They got fired. Hopefully not on the spot because who'd run the train home, but the, you know, the railroad did not want to put the regular seats back in, so they just put these two couches. Okay, so so like from where we even see these two by fours to the back of the train, that must have had to have been rebuilt at one time, yes. huh? It's all smashed in. Yes. Wouldn't even know that by looking at the top there. That's a pretty cool story there. So why are these here right now? The braces are there because we used to have, the family had put a house roof on this car. Okay. When it was connected to their house. And it was starting to, the um, roof was starting to collapse on itself. So they put up the braces to kind of help hold the roof up. And then there was a, a gentleman that was interested in helping us and he wanted to take the roof off. So he and a couple other volunteers removed to the house roof and you now see when you're outside you see the um, the original train car roof okay and it now instead of looks looking like a mobile home it looks more like a train car as it should okay so here's the thought they think this is the original mattress so naturally I have to get a view I know, I don't know how much you can see up there, but that was pretty cool. Where the platform would have been. Okay, so here's the back door. Here's a check this lockout, huh? And then the 
platform with those railings would have been on the back here. I'm on the walk back to the end here so I can get this view in here. This is so cool, this history, isn't it? Thanks a lot, Sue, for t telling us the story about this. You're welcome. This is awesome. Can I add one more thing? Sure can. Can I show you my favorite thing in this car? Uh, you can. Okay. This is, to me, really cool technology. So the lighting in this car, okay. when electricity was put in, every seat has a light. Okay. So it closes... Sorry, it won't close all the way. It's all right. It closes during the day when you don't need lighting. At night, the, you could just push this little button right there. Okay. It opens and up, open up and it automatically comes on. That is cool. Okay, now I see them. There's one there. There's one back there in that corner. Another one back in this corner. Yeah, here's another one. Okay. Well, thanks for sharing that. So what do you think? That was an awesome tour, wasn't it? I just love that. The woodwork in there. Yeah. 1880. It's, what, 124 years old. Can't beat that. Okay, so this is the original siding. And then this is siding we put on there um, after it was moved and they were making a house out of this. So as cool as this looks and as old, it's not the original siding. The original siding is under. And uh, yeah, they're hoping now that uh, this actually protected that wood siding, which it very well could have. So right now it's sitting on this flatbed semi-trailer and they have some chucks here that uh, they hope one day they'll be able to put underneath this. And um, there's some more, uh, there's some more, I don't know what you would call them, framework. I guess that's what I'd call it. And um, there's some more over there. And they're hoping one day that they can uh, get all those chucks underneath there, the wheels, and uh, build a little platform back here and get the railings on it and everything. But uh, holy cow, James J. Hill's office car from 1880 and it's still surviving what's better than that for minnesota railroad history Holy cow, I hope you guys like this video. 
can you imagine? That's James J. Hill's first office car. Oh, I love it. I'll catch you on my next one. You guys take care. God bless all of you. Just awesome. I just can't believe this history. Just awesome.